Now joining the 2 for 1 Drafts podcast is former Oklahoma State wide receiver Thailand Wallace. I know you're out there in Stillwater right now, Thailand, enjoying Thailand, Thailand, enjoying a really good Friday. How you doing, man? I'm good. Good. How about you? Doing great, man. You know, out here in Cincinnati, weather's not too bad, so you know we're we're keeping it keeping it okay here. Where what where I really want to start, man, is is what you've been up to, kind of since you left Oklahoma State and have been preparing for what I think is a, what April first, April second pro day at Oklahoma State. What drills are you working? What are you doing from a weight perspective, diet perspective? How are you preparing for that pro day? Yeah, so uh, you know, I just recently got back. Actually, I was at Exos in Frisco, Texas, and um, I was kind of working out there, doing everything there. But um, it went really well. Uh, we had a kind of our mini pre combine uh, workout this uh, past weekend, and uh, it went really well for me. But um, you know, as far as that goes, uh, the experience has been really nice. Um, you know, as far as a uh, diet and everything goes, they try to get me on a diet, but uh, you know, that's taken me a little bit of work to to get into. You know, I'm not really used to it, but. Um, you know, everything I've been working every drill, really uh, just trying to get ready to impress everybody, all the scouts and everything. So um, I can't you know, it went really well down to Exos, but I just got here to Stillwater. So I'll be training here. And, and what weight did you play this past season at? And then what weight are you kind of working up to this offseason? Uh, I was hit. I was at about 193 whenever I played this past season. And um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I'm trying to, you know, just kind of keep it pretty smooth or even with that weight. And have you received any feedback from teams about, like, do they want you to bulk up? I know some guys are like, we want you to add 30 pounds. I know that's probably not where you're at, but do you have any feedback on, like, where teams want to see you play? Uh, actually, when I, uh, when I talked to them, they really didn't say anything like that. They just asked me, like, what uh, what weight did you play at or what weight do you feel most comfortable? And I kind of just tell them, like, you know, whatever weight I feel comfortable at. So I kind of just tell them that. They don't really tell me if I need to get, you know, bigger or anything like that. There you go, man. I want to turn back the clocks a little bit and focus on kind of your recruiting background. You know, four-star recruit coming out um, in the 2017 recruiting class. And you also, you know, were a big multi-sport athlete. You know, played basketball, track and field, finished fifth in the state and triple jump as a junior. You were the guy in high school. It sounds like your high school background was was quite the one. And you received a ton of different offers and ultimately made that decision to go to Oklahoma State. How was that recruiting process and your your preps career really prepare you for Oklahoma State? Yeah, uh, the whole recruiting process was it went pretty good for me, um, you know, but as uh, coming out of high school, me, I have a twin brother that I played with and, you know, me and him were a, kind of a package deal and we kind of made that clear towards everybody. So, um, you know, unfortunately, it kind of changed things up a little bit. He ended up tearing his ACL, his junior and senior year. So, you know, obviously with me still playing, I pulled in uh, more offers, different offers from different places. And, um, you know, actually Oklahoma State was one of the first schools to offer us. And um, so we thought, you know, that was definitely an option. So we took a visit down there and we just, we just loved it. You know, the people, the the atmosphere out there, it was just different, you know, um, and we, we enjoyed it a lot. So uh, that kind of it really wasn't much of a choice. We took that one visit. And we we're like, OK, you know, I think this is where we want to be. So, um, you know, just going through that whole process and, you know, it, it was a different uh, process that me and him being a joint, you know, um, deal I guess or package deal but it, it was definitely an exciting exciting time and, and going to you know your career at Oklahoma State what I found interesting is you played almost exclusively outside receiver you know played over you know 800 snaps at outside receiver in 2018 400 in 2019 500 in 2020 played a ton of outside receiver and won consistently with your explosiveness at outside receiver have teams talked to you about positional alignment at the next level do they see you as a versatile piece that can move in the slot stay outside or do they kind of exclusively see you as this kind of outside type so yeah from what i'm hearing um you know i'm hearing you know obviously it's different from team to team but uh, a lot of them are saying you know they see me a lot you know going back and forth maybe outside maybe a little bit in the slot but um you know when i went to the senior bowl that was kind of a thing that you know they told us that you know kind of teams or you know scouts whoever they want to see uh you go in the slot a little bit more and so you know, I went to the senior bowl, did that a little bit, I, and it felt really good. It didn't feel bad at all. You know, I was expecting, like, it to feel weird or something like that, but it felt pretty natural. So, um, you know, as far as that goes, I, I see myself kind of playing outside and in the slot as well. Talk to me more about your senior bowl experience and kind of what you took away from being around those coaches, being, you know, going against top-level competition in the one-on-ones. What, do you, what were some of the key takeaways you had from go, your trip to Mobile? Yeah, uh, man, I was so happy uh, that, you know, Jim Nagy, the guy who hosts that uh, – puts that whole thing together. It got me out there. You know, it was a really great experience. Um, had a great time out there, but, uh, that whole, whole process was definitely, um, it was, it was different, you know, obviously being out there trying to learn NFL playbooks and, you know, we only have a week out there. So, uh, you have a short amount of time to kind of re- uh, retain all the information and go out and execute. But, um, it was really eye opening a little bit, I guess you would say, just not knowing really what to expect. And that given that 
whole process, giving you a little taste of what it's like at the next level and how things are run. But it was a really great experience, um, especially going out there competing with all the guys all around the, all around the country. You know, you're, their names you hear about and, you know, you see, but you never really, you know, put a face to the name or put a name. Yeah. So that was a really great experience. So it was really exciting to get out there and compete with everybody. You know, something that stands out for PFF when we kind of look at your profile, and obviously a lot of what PFF does is evaluating players, both at the NFL level and, you know, the NFL direct, you know, prospects and collegiate level. A big strength that we see for your game is explosiveness, you know, explosiveness at a line of scrimmage, explosiveness out of your breaks. Do you feel like that is kind of your calling card or what separates you in this class? Because that's the third party. That's PFF on the outside looking in. I'd love to hear from you what you feel like your biggest strengths are, what really separates you in this receiving class. Yeah, obviously, I think, uh, you know, I'm, you're right on point with that. I feel like my explosiveness for sure is definitely one of my strengths. And, you know, I think the way uh, my my ball skills, I think, is one of a really big strength that I think I have as well. You know, be whether it's um, running through the catch, uh, high point in the football, tracking it, whatever that is, you know, just ball skills in general, I think, is a really good strength that I have in mind. I definitely think you have to add the contested catchability, the ball skills, how you attack the ball in the air. That's something that I think any highlight tape that goes on Twitter with Tyline Wallace's name on it, it shows just what you can do attacking the ball in the air. I'd love to hear more about, too, you know, the stuff that people don't see. You know, People see the highlights, people see the touchdowns, but what goes into each week for you when you're preparing for an upcoming opponent? How much film are you watching? What exactly are you looking for on film? What does the practice schedule look like? You, know, you talk to some guys who do red zone work later in the week, one-on-ones on Tuesday. I'd be interested to know kind of your process as you prepare for an upcoming opponent. Yeah, so I mean, uh, like you were kind of saying, we kind of do it in that way. So we get Mondays off. So Mondays is kind of like the day to go watch film, take care of your body, you know, things like that. Get mentally ready, I guess, for the week. Um, yeah, Tuesdays is normally the day where we have one-on-ones and, uh, you know, just high high volume amount of reps and things like that, you know, just a, kind of the install day and, you know, just kind of, you know, get that knife sharpened for the rest of the week. And, um, yeah, throughout the rest of the week, it's kind of just uh, helmet shoulder pad days. That's really more for, you know, getting yourself mentally ready and staying in shape and things like that. But um, that's kind of, I guess you would say, how the week kind of goes. And, um, you know, that I think that whole process of how they put you through a week and trying to, you know, having the coaches there, having meetings with them helps you be able to do it on your own. Because um, one thing I, I do say I want to work on for the next level is trying to uh, be a better you know, a uh, film junkie, I guess I would say, and then learning how to break down the film the proper way and, you know, the way that it benefits me, not just going out and watching myself just run around. And, and how much, you know, because like releases are a big, you know, talked about part of receivers game. And I think a lot of when I talk to receiver prospects, they bring up film almost first and foremost, you know, looking at what a cornerback does from a tendency standpoint to get set up certain releases and those things. Is that something that you're looking for when you're watching a cornerback or something? Yes, definitely as well. I mean, yeah, I, there's so many. I mean, you everything, you know, you need is really on tape. But uh, especially those, you know, just going and watching guys, especially in the league, that's a real easy thing to do is just go kind of watch a certain guy, like whether it's Devontae Adams, you know, Stephon Diggs, whoever it is, you know, just go in and just watch them release off the line. You don't even have to watch the whole play if you don't want to. But, you know, just doing that and trying to be just be more creative when it comes to things like that. I mean, those are just that's just an easy way to go out there and get that done. Are there some guys in the NFL that you feel like you cater your game after? Do you watch a ton of, say, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, and feel like you can do a lot of the same things they can? Uh, you know, I, I've been trying to get you uh, actually more into that. You know, I haven't really just sat and I can say I really just went and studied this one guy and tried mm-hmm. to follow my after him. But um, I would say, you know, um, growing up, I think I, I watched a lot of Des Bryant. You know, I you know, being from Fort Worth, Texas, and, you know, the Cowboys was, you know, my team. So, I watched a lot of him growing up and the way he high pointed the football kind of, you know, made me, you know, inspired me to, you know, play, play receiver that same way. So um, that's kind of a little thing that I guess if you had to say, I chose anybody to be him. Yeah, I mean, Des Bryant's ball skills, obviously absurd, but he also, and he's, I mean, his his frame, a little bit bigger than yours, but he played big. And I feel like when you turn on your tape, you see yourself play big, maybe even bigger than, you know, where, you, you know, your stature maybe suggested. I think that's where Des Bryant really had a ton of success. I think that's a great player uh, to bring up for your game. Um, you know, wh- what I want to finish up with here is really talk about your, your motivation to play the game, you know, why you play football. You know, football involves a ton of sacrifice. You know, you talk a lot of prospects who have had to do so much to get to this point, even this point in their football careers to even advance that to go to the NFL and do all the sacrifice there what exactly is your motivation what is your why to continue to play football you know it's it's uh I guess you could say it's a number of things but uh, I think the number one reason for me is kind of just I I truly just enjoy it you know uh, just going out there and, and 
and playing the game. You know, I if I can just kind of just sit around all day and throw a football around with like for, for hours, you know, it's just I just really enjoy the game. You know, I feel like that's a, you know, an answer that a lot of guys, you know, tell everybody. But I don't know. For me, I feel like that's like I really mean it when I say that. I don't know. But, um, you know, obviously it's the things that's the, the main reason. But obviously, you know, uh, my I think I kind of owe it. You know, my brother, he's unfortunately not able to play anymore. So, you know, I know he would give anything to be able to, you know, step on the field again. So. For me, it's it's uh, that's also another reason. But you know, it's I think it's a uh, a lot of reasons why. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, I wish you the best of luck moving forward, and I really appreciate you setting aside the time. Oh yeah, thank you. Now joining the Two Foreign Drafts podcast is former LSU wide receiver Terrace Marshall Jr. And where I'd like to start, Terrace, really appreciate you having on the show. Is talk about what had to have been an absolutely absurd. Recruiting experience, former five-star recruit, consensus five-star, had what, like more than 25 scholarship offers coming out as a senior, you know, junior, senior in high school. How how insane was that, you know, coming out of high school? Uh, man, I just look at it as a blessing from God, man. Uh, I mean, I, I've been grinding all my life. Ever since I've been, ever since my pops put me in sports at five years old, man. And, uh, it's just a blessing to just, you know, finally see all, all the things that I've been working for uh, pay off. And so you said you've been in sports since five years old. What sports all did you play? Uh, I grew up playing basketball, uh, football, obviously. Uh, uh, I ran a little track in high school, too. Gotcha. For for basketball, what kind of player are we talking? You, you banging threes? You a, you a slasher, three and D type? I, I need to know the game you're playing. Man, I was pretty much – I could do it all, bro. I okay, was, okay, LeBron. Around. Ease up. Ease up, <laughs> Michael Jordan. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I played uh, I played the two and the three, man. Uh, I was uh, mostly on the wing. Uh, I, they'll pass to me. I'll take it baseline. Or I'll, I'll shoot the J. <laughs> Love that, man. Very cool. Um, you know, fast forwarding to kind of the experience you had at LSU. Obviously, you got thrusted into the limelight this past season, even though it was somewhat of an abbreviated season due to um, COVID nineteen. You had a ton of opportunity or more opportunity um, with Justin Jefferson leaving and those things. Jamar Chase opting out. Let's start there. This twenty twenty season. How much you know? How much of an improvement do you feel like you took this past season with the added opportunity, and how much did you grow as a receiver, in your opinion? Uh, man, uh, I took that off season, you know, uh, right before my junior season. I mean, I took it as business. Uh, you know, I, uh, I laid off everything, you know, that if it, if it didn't relate to football, uh, I mean, I didn't want to do it. Uh, even with uh, COVID and everything going on, uh, I didn't let that get in the way of my grind. So, you know, I, I just had my head down. I mean, I knew what type of year, what type of year I was heading into, and I knew it was going to be important for me. And uh, man, I just uh, grinded and uh, did everything I could and, uh, just to take advantage of every opportunity I was given. So, so when you went into that off season, obviously you know, all business, trying to improve, trying to be the best. Where did you feel like you had the biggest areas of improvement? Was it route running, ball skills, strength, speed? What did you like primarily address when you were looking to improve that off season? Uh, just my explosive, my explosiveness, man. Uh, just coming off the ball even harder, you know. Uh, just making the DB feel me even more. Uh, just uh, polishing up my routes. Uh, I know my routes got polished up, you know, within that, that span of a year. So I mean, just uh, just overall, just my game, man. Just my strength, you know, using my my size as, as an advantage. Uh, you know, just just waking up, and knowing, you know, just trying to trying to trying to reach my full potential. You know, another transition that you made going from 2018 and 2019 to 2020 was playing a lot more out, uh, in the slot. You know, the LSU mm-hmm. offense over the past few years has really prioritized the slot receiver position with a ton of targets. You saw that with Justin Jefferson in 2019. What kind of transitions to your game did you have to make or changes to your game you had to make to make that move into the slot? Oh, uh, man, my move to the slot from the outside, uh, I just told me that I had to play even smaller. You know, uh, you know you're playing big, you're out there on the perimeter by yourself on that holler. And it's like when you move inside, you got to play smaller. You got to be more swift. You got to drop your weight even more. Uh, so, I mean, it just helped me elevate my game even more. It helped me, you know, be more diverse. And uh, just uh, it just helped me show the scouts that, you know, I can play anywhere on the field. You know, let's go back a little bit and talk about your 2019 season, 671 yards, 13 touchdowns, playing in what was an absolutely star-studded LSU offense, arguably the best collegiate offense we've seen in a long time with Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, Jamar Chase, Let's start with the receiver group. How much of a you know competitive fire did you have playing with so many talented receivers at LSU? And LSU, in a lot of ways, has been wide receiver you for a long time. You know, I was talking to Bucky Brooks of NFL Media recently, and he's you know he talks about how LSU has been able to develop at that position such at a such at a high level. What was your relationship with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, and how much did having them on your football team, you know, with you as teammates, really create a competitive fire and make you better? 
Man, we was real tight, man. Just a great group of guys. Uh, we was always competitive on and off the field. We had a touchdown bet for uh, $100 in Waffle House. So whoever had the most touchdowns, they were going to have to treat the other two to that treat. So, uh, I mean, we just, we know, we always, you know, stay humble. You know, everything we did, you know, we did it for each other and ourselves at the end of the day for the team. Uh, I mean, we just kept each other motivated. We all worked hard off the field. We had our fun off the field. And, uh, man, I mean, I still reminisce on the times, you know, from 2019, wishing that I can go back, you know, and just relive those moments. Uh, yeah, man. man. So, that definitely, we, we cherished those times, man. It was, it was fun. Was that $100 every week or $100 at the end of the season? No, nah, $100 at the end of the season. I was about to say, dude, you know, you're eating Waffle House every single week. I don't know how you're doing it as oh, an man. athlete. What's your uh, what's your go-to Waffle House order? Man, I'll, probably, I'll say I'll get the uh, pork chop dinner with some eggs and grits, uh, eggs and cheese, grits and cheese, and I'll get a waffle, bro. I, I tear that up. Dude, that sounds like an absolute treat, man. That's awesome. Yeah, you got to um, go try that. You gotta go I, try dude, that. I've been to Waffle House once. I've been there once. It's not really here around Cincinnati. I'm also from the West Coast, but yeah. I, I might have to get that order. I might have to get the Terrace Marshall order here pretty soon. That's that's yeah. funny, man. That's awesome. Man, call that TM6, bro. Just call that TM6. I'm in, man. That sounds fantastic. Um, another, you know, another part of that too that I wanted to um, discuss with you is how much in co- are you in contact with Jefferson or Chase Atone? Now I know, obviously, Chase opted out this season, but how much do you talk with those guys still? I talk to those boys all the time, man. You know, just uh, we always talk. We just we close friends like that. Uh, uh, Jesse always, you know, he gonna tell us, soak us, the, soak, give us the game. You know, he he's ahead of us a year, so uh, he'd already been through it, been through the process. So, I mean, we just pretty much just listening to them, you know, staying humble. And, uh, man, just waiting on our time. Very cool, man. So, something I wanted to ask you about, too, was um, given in a given game week, the wide receiver position is so interesting to me because I do think there is a game within a game at wide receiver. You're going against a cornerback, you know, one-on-one a lot, and you have to kind of prepare for each opponent differently. In a given game week, how much film are you watching on an opposing defense, and what exactly are you looking for when you're preparing for a certain opponent? Oh uh, man, I'm watching film uh, every day throughout the week. Uh, I'm breaking down the film. Uh, I'll start off the film, start off looking at the red zone. Then I'll go to the middle of the field. Then I'll just go to the coming out part. Uh, I mean, I break it down tremendously. Uh, I, the coaches did a, a great job of helping me do that. And uh, just uh, things I just look for in the cornerback, whether it's his feet, his feet, uh, just small movements, whatever he do with his hands. Uh, anything I can do, you know, to help me prepare for the, for the next opponent. And how does that film preparation change in the offseason? For example, what are you looking at now on film? Are you watching a lot of film on yourself? Do you turn on film on NFL guys? What exactly are you looking for on film these days? Yeah, I watch film on myself, uh, and I definitely watch film on uh, Julio and D-Hop, uh, Mike Thomas, those type of guys with uh, with those big body frames, you know, they can, they can still do it all. Uh, I mean, uh, just, you know, just more in the offseason, you're looking at the things that, you know, you can critique yourself on and uh, get better. You know, you want to make all your weaknesses, some of your strengths also. So um, just doing as much as I can to polish it up and uh, take it to the field. You know, something that PFF sees is a big strength for you. One, it's size, but also a part of that size is your catch radius and your ability to attack the ball in the air and those things. Do you feel like that your size, your catch radius, you know, your ability to attack the ball in the air, do you feel like that is a strength for you and something that separates you in this class? Or what do you feel like your biggest strengths are? What is your separating factor in this uh, receiver group? Oh, uh, man, definitely that too. Uh, and uh, to say, man, what separated me from the rest, bro, is uh, there's there's different types of receivers in this draft. There's like a different, there's like six different categories of receivers. And uh, I feel like you get every, every last one of those categories all in one, you know, when you look at me. Uh, I can do, I can do anything you ask me to do. Uh, Man, I can play, you know, three levels of the field. I can go deep. Uh, third down, I can run a slant and break the defender down and get the first down. I can run a deep route across the middle, man, and break it break it for 60 yards. Uh, so, it's, uh, man, I just feel like you're getting everything, you know, all in one. So, why not go after a guy, you know, you can get it all in one instead of just looking for one category. You're also getting an elite Waffle House recommendation. I don't know if teams are taking that into consideration, but it's 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 up there for sure. <laughs> um, the 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 last thing, and we can finish with this. I'd be interested to know, you know, what work you're doing right now to prepare for the LSU Pro Day, or and what position drills are are you prioritizing most? Are there certain drills that you want to hit on, and you're you know really circling on your calendar, like I have to do well here, and and um, how that process has gone for you so far? I uh, mean, uh, man, just all of the drills, man, I look at it as, man, I'm just playing football. You know, uh, at the end of the day, I'm just going out there just being myself. You know, just trying to – I'm only going to be my best if I be myself. And uh, I'm just pretty much just working on every route in the route tree, you know, polishing up everything I need to polish up on, uh, working on my 40. And uh, that's that's all I can say, man, just getting ready, you know, getting ready for that next thing. 
And uh, just hopefully whenever they see me, you know, it'll be I'll be be impressing them even more. Uh, a couple more questions for you, Terrace, and I really appreciate the time. Um, one would be, you know, what weight did you play at this past season? And have you received any feedback on, you know, what weight you're going to play at in the NFL or what weight we are working to right now? Uh, I haven't received any feedback on, you know, any uh, any requirements or whatever. But, uh, I mean, I, my plan to weigh in at 210 on Pro Day. Oh, uh, nice. that, was, that was pretty much my plan weight last year from 206 to 210. Uh, I mean, any weight b- between there is good weight for me. Uh, I don't really feel the difference. But I plan on uh, weighing in at 210. Yeah, 215, you go to Waffle House first, man. I got that recommendation for you. <laughs> Last one I have for you, and I like asking prospects this, is you know this yeah. question of, like, what's your why? You know, Why are right. you, you know, going through all of this sacrifice to play football, putting your right. body through these things and all of that stuff? Football is, is a very difficult sport. You know, It takes ultimate sacrifice to be as good as you are at it, even at the level you're at now, and obviously pursuing greater lengths in the NFL. What is your motivation to play the game? I got a couple, man. Uh, with number one being, you know, since my pops put me in sports at five years old, you know, I always found the love and that passion for the game. And uh, as I continue to get better, uh, I, I constantly see, you know, what type of ceiling I got. And, uh, I see it and I see no ceiling. So uh, I just want to be the greatest to ever do it. You know, that's a lot to say, but uh, I feel like I can, you know, I can work towards that. And uh, second, man, I just want to retire my parents, you know, every day working, you know, waking up, you know, seeing, seeing the struggle some days and uh you know definitely seeing them trying to hide it so uh i mean i, I just want to make sure my parents straight you know make sure my family good and don't have to want for nothing because you know they always made sure i, I didn't want for nothing. can definitely respect that man i really appreciate the time like i said and i wish you the best of luck moving forward yes sir appreciate you